Here's a quick recap of what all has happened since morning in the Mumbai Sessions Court as far as the deposition of David Coleman Headley is concerned. Total 50 questions have been asked till now. Some important questions uh, and answers in the court uh, that have taken place at this moment is Ujwal Nikam, the prosecution lawyer, has said who were your colleagues? He asked this question to David Coleman Headley to which he replied, I was dealing with Sajid Meer directly. Meer has asked me to change my name to Daud Gilani to David Headley. Now then the next question that was asked, this is just preliminary information that we have got of the total of 50 questions. When did you leave, when did you visit Pakistan? Uh, to which the reply was immediately after 15th of February 2006. The next question was what task was entrusted to you by Sajid Meer? And he says he wanted me to go to India to set up an office and a business so that I could stay there. He gave me instructions to make general videos of Mumbai. Now, uh, it is believed that Ujwal Nigam asked the next question, saying, you asked uh, what, what exactly was the purpose? Uh, did he ask the handlers what the purpose of making this video was? He actually responded, David Headley responded in this deposition by saying that no, he did not. The next question was, you didn't ask because you were a true follower of lashkar e -Toyba? To which David Headley responds in this deposition by saying, yes, I didn't ask, I had a general idea already. So this list goes on and on. There's a lot of information that we've been able to gather from our reporters. Let's, let's first quickly go across to Smita Sharma, Deputy Editor Smita Sharma, who now is speaking to G.K. Pillai, former Home Secretary. Well, yes, the former Home Secretary, Mr. G.K. Pillai, somebody who handled those Headley files, dealt with them very, very closely, uh, is now exclusively in a conversation with India today. To begin with, sir, you know, what do you really see the significance of this deposition today? David Headley had been interrogated by the NIA three-member team in 2010, which lasted for around 30 hours over a span of one week. But how is this deposition going to make a difference to the 2611 case? Uh, but, well, whether it's going to make a difference to the 26 by 11 case, I'm not sure. But for the first time, at least, uh, we've got uh, permission from the Americans that the evidence given by David Headley can be used as part of. Earlier, it was only as like background information which we could use. And therefore, this recording of his testimony uh, would be of evidential value in a court in India. Mm -hmm. But this might not still be admissible in a Pakistani court, you know, they had sent a team even after, uh, at the Judicial Commission and later on went ahead and said that we were not allowed to cross-examine, this is not evidence that is admissible in Pakistani court. Yeah, I think so. I think the, from, the, from the Pakistani point of view, the stand they have taken is that uh, anything which is done in India is of no evidentiary value in Pakistan. So it will be all be hearsay statements uh, of David Hadley. But having said that, sir, then do you think that now that India has gone in for a web link option, is this something that India, the other countries who lost their nationals as well, can pressurize Islamabad that why don't you also ask for a Hadley deposition in your own court to make it admissible? Yeah, that can be done. It, put, it can put a little bit of public pressure on Pakistan. But I think the more important thing is that uh, you've got a former uh, Pakistani citizen who is now an American citizen who is saying what we were always saying and it's not it's an independent third party version uh, which uh, Pakistan knows about but at least it's now formally on record. Can you recall some of the feedback that you got from the NIA interrogator sir because you know you were in North Block at that point in time dealing with the files. Uh, what was the reaction of the NIA team really after having interrogated David Haitley? No, he gave us a lot of information because he had, as you said, come come number of times to uh, almost, I think, nine times to India, and then uh, he went to Pakistan and had interaction with uh, all the co-conspirators in the 26 by 11 uh, attack. So, to that extent, he is one person who has had, even though he was not physically present in the control room, but he had uh, direct access to all the people, including his ISI handlers. I think the important thing for us to understand is first that this comes on record uh, second uh, whether the P pakistan pakistani authorities would like to use this as a base for their own interrogation of david hadley and whether they can do a video interview recording of his statement to nail uh, those the co-conspirators in pakistan islamabad uh, that is a matter which the pakistan government will have to take a decision
you know but david hedley was not in the Kar- karachi control room himself from where all the commands came in for those uh, you know 10 in fact jihadis who came into uh, india and launched that massacre on the streets of mumbai so how does that impact when david hedley comes today in the deposition and talks about his handlers in the isi in the pakistani army in the lashkar e taiba somebody like a sajid meer how does that play out because he wasn't at the end of the day in the control room himself he was not in the control room but he was uh, uh, say, he was a co conspirator and uh, if he brings out some more evidence because i think what he has given us are only what we call as circumstantial evidence in terms of uh, his contacts his his what he spoke and what others gave him instructions and so on but if he can give us far more evidence than what he has given us today which can be verified mm. if he gives us that evidence and he's got a very short photographic memory i can tell you from the nia investigators who had interrogated him first if he is able to give us some specific details hmm. which can then nail specific people but those specific Pakistan, details will have to be verified again by the pakistanis themselves yes. you know they will have that will have to be verified by the pakistan themselves and the pakistani in agencies who are investigating the first batch of investigation they did in 2009 hmm. uh outstanding piece of work in terms of linking the satellite uh, you know the gps system from the covers which were here they were i mean the satellite numbers they were able to recover in karachi the covers of the same with identical numbers so investigation in the first few months was extremely uh, shall i say professional hmm. and su- the, subsequently thereafter i think the pakistanis decided to go slow Today, do you think, sir, that uh, somehow the likes of a half a side to Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, that they are firewalled now, that whatever had to happen has already happened. Beyond this, perhaps Islamabad is not going to act. Is that a sense that you get? Yeah, I don't think Pakistan is going to act because uh, they were in cahoots with these people. So I don't think Pakistan will really act. They'll go through the motions of uh, cooperation, but don't. I don't. I don't think we can expect anything from Pakistan more than, uh, shall I say, just uh, lip service. So, but in terms of the American role in this entire thing, when we are talking about a David Coleman Hadley, much has been said, suspicions, speculations about how he was a double agent. Uh, we know that he turned an approver for the, you know, for the Drug Enforcement Agency in the U.S. Uh, on a couple of occasions and gave them very high-profile narcotic traders from the Afghan region. Uh, was it very difficult for the NIA to get access? Did Mr. Chidambaram have to make calls personally to the U.S. Attorney General at that point in time? Was that how the initial access was finally given to India in June of 2010? See, I think the uh, the Americans had a guilty conscience because they had taken a unilateral decision to not extradite him to India first, and that deal had been struck with David Hadley before they even approached the government of India to say that. we are now willing to provide some evidence about what david hadley has told them hmm. so having made that deal with them and i think the deal was made partly to what i would call it as to protect american interests was i my own very clear feeling is that the david hadley would have blackmailed the americans to say that look if you send me to india i will expose hmm. uh hmm. your game what you, what you were doing with me and i think the americans didn't want that and that is why they gave him the non ex, you know the non extraditable guarantee first mm. before they even approached uh, india to say that we have some evidence which we would like to share with you because the records that have emerged so far over the years they clearly state that you know there were signs there were clear signs that america chose to drive past even uh, in fact uh, david hedley's girlfriend having called of the american agencies and you know trying to give a tip off that perhaps my boyfriend is a terrorist that too was ignored by the agency so there was a deliberate plan to that Yes, I think uh, the Americans want to soft pedal it. I mean, it uh, it's understandable. If he was their double agent, they would not like to expose him. Mm-hmm. A- any intelligence agency would do that. But I think uh, in this case, uh, especially where the attack took place on Indian soil and there were six Americans killed, mm-hmm. I think the Americans, uh, shall I say, put it very mildly. I think they played dirty with us. they played dirty that's very significant but sir you know in today's deposition and which is also going to continue tomorrow over a couple of hours uh, uh, the abu jindal connection is perhaps the most important connection that has been proved because you cannot uh, try the foreign nationals foreign terrorists in absentia, absentia but abu jindal is the indian connection here uh, david hedley has suggested perhaps in his interrogations that he had met one indian man in his training camps 
how strong is the possibility that this was Abu Jindal that we are talking about? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be very sure what, how exactly the interrogation of uh, Abu Jindal and others have, what has really taken place. So that is something which uh, we'll have to wait and see as the uh, case progresses and whether any further evidence uh, comes out. Mm -hmm. So you said that you know the NIA team remembered that uh, David Hedley had a very sharp uh, photo finish memory. What else uh, you know was their observation of Hedley like? Because he seemed to be very cold, calculated. Perhaps some might say that playing true to his chameleon eye color spirit. Yes, I think he was. Um, I think he was a very good uh, professional agent, if I may say that, so, spy. And uh, he told us exactly what he wanted to say. And beyond a particular point, he would not say it. Hmm. And I think uh, uh, the Americans did not also press him to answer questions which he didn't want to answer. Uh, but that, that was something that had also been laid to the NIA team <coughs> right before. That right do not before. ask him about DEA, do not ask him about any links to any other agent. That was something that was put to India as a condition? No, they said that if they, they would tell us if we could ask any questions, but uh, they would tell us which questions uh, he, he would answer and which he would not answer. Right, right. So uh, that was there and uh, even some of his personal details etc he didn't want to get into so he would not answer those questions and uh, with the uh, what shall I say the presence of the FBI in, uh, mm. investigators also that is something which at that point we really wanted to get a lot of background information to substantiate our own case mm. on the 26th by 11 to a certain extent he gave us corroborative evidence which helped us in the investigation here. But uh, the uh, since there was no lack, there was total lack of cooperation from Pakistan. Uh, investigation couldn't move. So, but how much, uh, how much of his statement actually also spoke about his connection and his proximity to Hafiz Said? He made, he made a mention that uh, he had met Hafiz Said. I mean, um, and therefore, you know, in this group, therefore, uh, the connection of Hafiz Said with the conspirators is more or less. Uh, well established because they were all in this group together so uh, uh, that is what he says but as we would say that is his hearsay testimony in a court hmm. which has hmm. to be corroborated separately by you know linking him to a particular um, place in Pakistan and linking Hafiz Said at the same time and and so on that is the ground uh, investigation which can only be done in Pakistan by the Pakistani investigators themselves and they are just not willing to do that. Was all of this a part of the dossier after dossier that you kept on send, sending to Pakistan? Yeah, th these are all included in the dossier but uh, my own feeling is that uh, the Pakistanis have more or less uh, on 26 by 11 uh, I think they have decided to stonewall and not move anything for forward. And is that voice sample issue the sort of the big obstruction there as well? Because the courts also seem to be stonewalling on voice samples. Yeah, voice sample is something which would give us what I call evidentiary corroborative material. But we know that from the voice samples that we have as well as what uh, the other agencies have, we know these are the voice samples of, you know, Lakhvi and uh, Said Mir and so on. But unless you can mm. take an official voice sample in the presence of a magistrate or whatever it is, and then that is then compared with the voice samples of the 26 by 11 during, which came from the control room in, pa in Pakistan, right. then only you have the linkage. Otherwise, right. it's only somebody's, somebody's voice sample, but it's not, can be proved that it is his. Right. Uh, sufficient for a court of law and that's exactly the reason why Pakistan is not uh, willing to give that because once the voice sample is given officially hmm. and it matches which you can match uh, you know we could send it to any independent FBI or anybody else and the voice sample matches then automatically he's proved to be a co-conspirator and then has to be convicted. One final question. I remember, in fact, uh, the, uh, somewhere it was mentioned that Hafiz said that, recall, uh, in fact, uh, David Henry had recalled an anecdote where apparently his wife had gone and complained to Hafiz Said about the husband not taking care of her. Was that something that uh, was there in the files that uh, you came across? Yeah, it was there and it was, it was in one sense amusing that uh, uh, Hafiz Said is saying that he must also perform his husbandly duties which are equ as equally important as his uh, activities as a conspirator in the 26 by 11 uh, um, okay. conspiracy. So it just gives a personal anecdote about what happened. But, yeah. uh,
more than that i don't know even with his jihad he was married four times but just absolutely one last question sir does it also prove given the fact that while i do understand it's here say evidence at the moment but the fact that he had three handlers let isi pak army and all of that that went into the reconnaissance that what pakistan said that this was only about non state actors is once again falsified that this was clearly about state actors the 2611 attacks no, i think it's very clear i think world over i think it is well recognized i think uh, that pakistan has been you know the it's a hotbed of terrorism as they say it's the fountain head of terrorism literally now uh, all over the world but uh, each country looks at it from its own strategic and national interests and therefore they are not willing to declare pakistan a terrorist state right which only if that is done i think the real pressure will come on pakistan to start complying with uh, some of the or start dismantling some of the terrorist networks in the state right many thanks for speaking to india today giving us all that uh, very informative perspective on this david uh, coleman headley case even as the deposition continues in that mumbai court today and tomorrow but clearly much of this evidence to translate into deliverable action in terms of bringing the perpetrators of mumbai mm -hmm. attacks to justice uh, that depends really on islamabad and their willingness absolutely and smitha it now appears that voice after voice is now seeing reason in the fact that india could through its diplomatic channels tell pakistan to follow the same drill to have david coleman headley depose in front of their courts via video conferencing thanks very much smita sharma for joining us with all the latest in an exclusive chat with former home secretary the man who handled directly as the union home secretary the david coleman headley files